Hi, welcome to my session. Today we shall uh, speak about the skill of questioning. Now this particular skill is also very important in the teaching learning process. Therefore, each teacher needs to possess the skill of questioning. It might sound very simple, isn't it? Everybody can place a question, but how systematically and how scientifically one can place the question involves, it involves specific skill. So, generally when we speak about questioning, it implies that we are involving the cognitive domain in the learner. Okay, so what does, what does that imply? It implies that we are trying to enhance the thinking capacity in the learner. We are trying to enhance their ability of reasoning. <coughs> Sorry, their reasoning ability. In a way, the teacher is trying to find out how far the student have understood or ha uh, is able to uh, sort out or is aware about what has been taught to them or about the subject content. Okay, so that is how questionings are being involved. It stimulates the learner to generate ideas, to think about and to respond accordingly. Okay, so in this way, we are creating a thoughtful situation in the classroom. We are involving, uh, we are engaging the learner to think, you know, it's, it's a thinking process. How deeply they can think, how Mm, logically they, they can think and how they can uh, beautifully come out with certain responses. How far they understood the subject matter. So all these uh, are taken into consideration while placing a question. We shall further know what are the precautions that as a teacher, what are the precautions that one needs to take. So let us see to it. It should be grammatically correct. It should be well structured and sequenced. It must be precise and clear. It must be related to the teaching point and therefore it should be relevant. So while framing the question, the teacher should Bear in mind that the question should be well structured and it is in sequence. Clear? It must be precise. It should be exact to what the teacher is intending to procure, procure from the learner. It should never be a lengthy question. It should be brief, very short and systematic. Clear? It should be grammatically correct, as I said. So all these things the teacher needs to take into account. Furthermore, the teacher has to speak out questions neither too hurriedly nor too slowly. Their voice should be audi audible enough and clear. Question must be put in general to the class so that the pupils get alert and attend to it. Also, give a brief pause after delivery of the lesson. So, in a nutshell, I, uh, I would like to po uh, put it this way that when a teacher we understood that the, the question should be well structured, isn't it? But while delivering, while throwing the question to the learner, 
the teacher has to see to it that it is not delivered hurriedly not to slowly if it is delivered hurriedly then the learner will not be able to understand what exactly the teacher has asked okay secondly is that if the teacher is uh, running you know it's throwing the question in a slow manner then the actual uh, idea Invo uh, involving in the question will be lost the student will be not aware as what exactly uh, that uh, what exactly the teacher stated clear so in this way we see that it should never be placed so hurriedly not to slowly also the teacher should see that one question at one time Hmm. If a teacher uh, repeatedly uh, asks, uh, uh, you know, three to five questions at once, uh, it is illogical way of questioning. The voice again, it should be audible to all the classes. Every corner to, till the last bench, all sides, it should be audible. Hmm. That doesn't mean that the teacher needs to scream loudly, okay? So, it should be audible enough for all the pupils to hear. And that each words, each sentences that the teacher utters should be clear enough. Okay? It should be clear enough so that they can pick up what exactly the teacher has asked. Now, the purpose of Questioning is what? It is because the teacher wants to make the pupil aware and be attentive. Normally, if a teacher keeps on explaining on and on and no questions, is being, uh, no questions are being placed, then definitely the students will feel that, oh, this te particular teacher never asks questions, so it's okay. If we listen or we don't listen, it's, it's fine. <laughs> it, it might happen. So, that's why in order to uh, keep their attention awake, in order to motivate them, in order to be present not just physically but mentally as well, in order to uh, make them attend the class, okay, so the teacher needs to adopt this technique of placing a question now when he places the question he should pause for a while that implies brief pause is required after delivery of the question when the teacher throws a question if a teacher immediately asks the pupil to answer they will not get any scope of thinking and uh, coming up, you know, coming out with certain solution or respond to that particular question. Or maybe the student have not understood the question at all. It might happen. So what, uh, what is required? The teacher needs to maintain a brief, a brief pause, but that pre uh, pause should not be long. Okay. Therefore, it has been specified as brief, maybe few seconds or a minute. Now, the next thing is that when a teacher, after um, throwing the question, the teacher can firstly ask the students to volunteer. Whoever knows or uh, knows, please raise your hand. So, students will raise their hand and the teacher can randomly pick up any of the students to give the response. Or otherwise, what the teacher can do is, in the second instances, the teacher can uh, uh, ask any of the students randomly, okay? By not asking them to volunteer it, but randomly the teacher will point out or uh, call out student's name to respond to that particular question. So, these techniques are very important for a teacher to adopt while questioning. Okay, so here uh, 
it has been pointed out as particular students can uh, can be selected for responding so i have given two ways that is either ask them to volunteer and then randomly select them to respond or in secondly you have delivered a question after that you can yourself select any of the student randomly to respond to your question but always remember that you should never have selected students for responding when i was a student i i had all, always seen that the teacher used to attend to only few students clear so this should not happen if this happens then definitely the other students will be thinking that oh the teacher will ask only this particular student so we are not in that li list so it's okay fine if we don't think also it will do okay so this sort of uh, situation might arise therefore the main purpose of questioning is is to stimulate them them means all the students to think therefore the uh, st teacher should not leave any of the stu uh, student unattended all the uh, students should be attended okay so uh, they that is very important so let's switch to the types of questions now while talking about the types there can be low order type of question middle order and the higher order type of questions now let us understand this while talking about the low ordered question it implies those type of questions which involves only a recall and recognition type of responses whereas in the middle order type of question it implies that responses where it underlines understanding part among the learners then it is the middle order type of question while coming to the higher order type of question it implies that when a, uh, when those questions compels it stimulates the learner or the pupil to uh, you know uh, to critically think or reason out or uh, bring about some uh, judgmental statement or evaluating uh, skills or maybe creativity in the learner then it is touching upon the higher ordered learner a, a higher ordered question clear so in this way we see that the teacher depending upon what the lesson is been taught depending upon the learner the questions can be framed out i hope it is clear check it out i repeat in case of lower order question it implies that those questions like uh, when was x y z established okay who was a b c so all those questions were simple recognition and recall types have been involved means the student uh, in order to respond to that particular question the student have to just quickly think okay recall and try to recognize it and respond it so it doesn't uh, require much of brain work so that comes under the lower order type of questions wherein if the question compels a pupil to um, stimulate hmm, their thinking in a way to generalize their understanding the teacher want to test whether they actually understood it or not so what the teacher can do is 
can you uh, they can say that can you explain it in your own words can you give some more example relating to what i have stated so in this way the understanding level of the pupil are being tested so this comes under the lower type of questions but in case of higher order type of questions the students are to come up with something new or innovative thing something uh, relating to some creative ideas or views their ability to uh, think logically or think critically when such type of questions are been asked which involves their critical thinking and judgment it implies that higher order type of questions are being asked clear so this is all about what questioning skills imply what are the precautions that one needs to keep uh, take into account while framing the questions what are the different type of questions and how it needs to be placed now coming to the next part of our discussion is the components of questioning now in this case in this uh, slide we see that certain behavioral components relating to the skill of questioning has been placed the first can you see this prompting now in when we say prompt what what does uh, what what does it come to your mind obviously hint isn't it so hint getting a hint a clue a sort of giving a clue okay so that is uh, what it is implying even in this case okay prompting now this technique means to go into the students response deeply when it is incorrect or when there is no response what does a teacher do a teacher tries to give a series of hints or clue for enable for enabling the learner to think of a possible solution or respond to that particular question in this way it implies that it leads the learner to a desired answer okay so it is all about giving hint okay different a hint or many hints clue or clues I hope it is clear. Okay, let's switch to the next one. Seeking further information. Now, in this case, when a student is see prompting means when a student is unable to respond. Okay, but in this case, when a student is able to respond. what does the teacher do the teacher tries to seek further information okay seek for the inform information from the same student like asking uh, yes continue good keep it up yes that's interesting it sounds interesting yes go on so in this way the teacher links up or adds up certain questions on and on in order to seek further information regarding a particular thing normally in classes we we come across certain students who tend to give such beautiful response or some 
unexpected responses or some interesting responses wherein the teacher uh, wishes to know more about it. So in this case, the teacher tries to seek further information relating to that particular question. Clear? Okay. So the next thing is that redirection okay now redirection we shall understand about redirection okay now redirection means the question has been redirected like take for example a question has been asked to a student by the name rudra okay so in this case what happens this particular student is unable to respond to the question. So, the question that has been asked to this particular student is now being redirected to another student. Supposing Bhante. Okay. So, in this case, what happens? The same question has been redirected to another question. And now Bhante may be in a position to respond or may not be in a position to respond. If the response is not being sought by this, then again it has been redirected to another student. Okay? So, maybe Lucy... So, Lucy responds to the question. So, in this way, when the question is being redirected from one student to the other, it is called as, it is called as redirection. Okay. So, in this case, we have spoken about redirection. Now, coming to this focus, this part, okay, refocusing. Now, in this case, what happens is that in the same way, supposing a question has been asked to another student, maybe Raj. Okay, so a question has been asked to Raj. Now, Raj is not being able to respond to the question so the question has been redirected to another student hmm? maybe Priya so Priya responds it correctly clear so when she responds it correctly what what do the teacher do the teacher refocuses the question to Raj and ask Raj to respond to the question inquiring that whether he heard what Priya said and can is he in a position to respond it. So when this is done, this process is called as refocusing. Is that clear? It is known as refocusing technique. I hope it is clear. So it is like going back to the first student whom the teacher asked the question but was not able to respond it in the first, first instance. Clear? Alright. So let us proceed to the next slide. Coming to this slide, we see that the component given as precision and clarity of language. So, in this case, we understand that this technique, it is used when the learner is partially incorrect or maybe uh, not being able to complete the uh, answer. Okay. So, in this case, what do the teacher do? The
the teacher tries to explain it precisely in a correct and clear language so as to enable the learner to understand so this component it is known as precision and clarity of language i hope this is clear now coming to the next component is linking with specific objective now in this technique it is used when the pupil gives a correct response okay so when the pupil gives a correct response the teacher appreciates it and enables the pupil to think more on that particular topic and thus in a way it stimulates the thinking capacity in the learner clear so coming to the next component that is using of students response for further questioning now this technique what does it do it involves asking the same question from one student to the other student in order to increase the student's participation in a way it enables the learners to compare their responses to that of the other responses also to bring out the contrast between the various responses that has been obtained from the learners okay so in today's lesson we have seen and understood what questioning skill imply and what are the basic things that as a teacher we need to take into account for enhancing the skill of questioning what are the different components associating with this particular skill of questioning how the teacher can boost up the questioning skill depending upon the learner's needs and capacity clear yeah? so today as of today like uh, my session i will conclude my session here but if, if in case you have any doubt please don't hesitate to ask till then till we meet again okay thank you and god bless you all stay fine stay fit jai hind